So, hello, welcome back to another episode of the Self Development with Tactics podcast. Um, today we are doing something new, or we we're just not going to go ahead with something. As far as I remember, I have finished the other one. I have finished the one that I've started. Not yesterday but i guess the day before maybe not even the day before maybe it's, today is wednesday maybe on monday well i don't know or on sunday actually therefore um let us actually have a look at let's you know let's or no i've actually been completely wrong to be honest there is something to go through um design your work by tiago forte um Really amazing book, really interesting book, really good one, and um, really enjoyable as well. So there we see, and it is also white, which makes my face a bit brighter, which is nice. Amazing. I like that. Experimental habit formation. I'd like to propose a framework for this type of learning that is both feasible and focused on the individual. Experimental habit formation. I believe it can help resolve one of the fundamental paradoxes of modern life. How to balance our need for stability and routine with our thirst for novelty and exploration. Which is a really good point. Tremendously good point indeed. Because I think that it is something that we all face and we all see and we all have. And uh, we all have to deal with Um, from time to time. Sometimes we just want to have something new, but while doing something new is amazing and great and good, there is also the chance and or there is this this, this danger, quote unquote, of, well, um, this danger of, of doing something new gives you new challenges. Do you want to really have these challenges? Anyway. The first thing that's clear is that experimental habit formation cannot be developed top down like other businesses, uh, I'm sorry, other business and self-improvement frameworks. To be feasible for the average individual, it needs to be built from the bottom up. Concretely, we need to start with people's actually lived experiences, building from there to communities of practice and finally to academic theories. Habits are MVBs. Minimum viable behaviors. They have a clear beginning, middle and end. Q behavior reward. Making them easy to define and identify when they appear. The good ones tend to be internally coherent and inherently or inherently, inherently, whatever, rewarding, thus self-sustaining. Habits are famously difficult to create and sustain, yet every person maintains many habits and they can and go or I'm sorry, they come and go all the time. This paradox is a strong hint that they flourish only as organic immersion patterns. Since emergence is hard to fake, this gives us a high standard of success in our experiments. Well, um, what I do want to underline a little tiny bit is the good ones tend to be internally coherent and inherently rewarding, thus self sustaining if you want to keep a head uh, a habit um, I mean ask yourself well is it a good habit doing sports working out probably is for sure is a good habit depends on the extent depends on the reasons and so on and so forth but um, um, but it is not pretty easy to sustain a habit of working out regularly on a maybe even on a daily basis if this is the thing that you want to start the thing you want to do um even you know this is a side note it it may not be very smart to to start like that it for sure is not smart to start like okay um from not working out at all to working out every single fucking day maybe even whole body seven times a week do not do that it's not smart it's not make any sense uh, whatsoever. But anyway, um, it is a good habit because there is a reward. On the other hand, smoking, there is also a reward. 
serotonin or, or dopamine, whatever it releases, maybe even both. Um, is it a good habit? No, it isn't. Is it a good habit for the body? Does it feel good? Yes, it does. Does working out feel good um, momentarily? Maybe not really. Sometimes it does. Sometimes we kind of get a high from it. On the other hand, uh, in the long run, is it good? Are you going to feel better about yourself, about your body, about whatever? Yes, definitely the case. But I would argue that the human being kind of focuses a tiny bit more on the present. Because if you do not have anything to eat in the present, well, what is the future going to look like? Probably not that amazing. At least this is how I'm thinking about it. This may just be totally wrong as well. I don't know. Sometimes achieving statistical significance can uh, require diluting, I'm sorry, diluting the conclusions so much that their substantive significance is lost. At least at the level of a single individual who cares if a weight loss treatment is effective with 99.9% confidence if the average effect size is one pound. Yeah, um, not that significant, not that great, not that amazing. By relaxing the traditional requirements of population-sized clinical science, we lose universal validity and reliability and replicability, but we gain a series of powerful benefits in our pursuit of self-improvement. Five benefits, benefits to be exact. This highlights an experience many self-experiments have, re experimenters, I'm sorry, have reported that the self-awareness they gained in the process of self-tracking was the real reward. Self-tracking enhances self-awareness by providing a concrete mechanism for self-reflection. The act of recording, so-called active tracking, requires the subject to input something manually. A response to a question, a self-reported evaluation or a device reading. The single factor with the highest correlation with unhappiness across the entire study was mind-wandering. The more someone had their mind on something other than what they were doing, regardless of whether they were thinking about something more pleasant or less pleasant than what they were doing, the more unhappy they were, likely to be both while mind wandering and in general. If you are extremely tall, you know you are an outlier. You can take measures to compensate for a word for a world designed for the median, but for many things, medical and otherwise, you don't know where on the distribution you fall. We are all victims at some point in our lives, and especially in our most unique traits of the ecological fallacy. Inferences about us made from inferences about a group to which we belong, which are then turned into individual prescriptions presented as objective facts. Yes. This is actually very, <laughs> very cynical, but um, it is quite the case. You know, studies are based on the uh, you know the 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 median the the many people that are apparently the same but there is always going to be outliers especially in the medical fields i'd say that there are a ton of outliers you know and also a ton of groups some people are allergic to x y and c some people aren't maybe the 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 um most of the population isn't but still there's a tremendously big group of people that is and so on and so forth um in the end, there are many, many, many very big groups. Creating one's own context for a life changes, for a life changes, what well, a life change, I'm sorry, is difficult but crucial as numerous studies have shown that people are more likely to achieve goals they set for themselves. It allows people to focus on optimization, improving what is already working to a certain extent instead of what specialists from medicine to psychiatry to social work to substance abuse tends to focus on uh, remediation and intervention in extreme cases i often recommend habit cycling trying one new habit per month on a regular schedule start on the first of the month even if you feel unprepared especially if you feel unprepared and um, many things are in, in this section. Self-awareness, very important. Maybe trying out tracking. You know, maybe it is something for you, gratitude, tracking, happiness, tracking, um, just, just seeing where you are. 
what you're doing and how you could actually also optimize that. Because without data, without knowing anything, you're probably not really going to be able to do so. Because you don't know where you are on, on a scale from 1 to 10. Um, I don't know, because I am not tracking anything quite. But yeah, with that being said, I'm going to end the episode there. Hopefully see you soon. Bye-bye.